What if I told you Microsoft just unveiled a quantum computer chip that could completely change the future of computing? Not just an incremental upgrade, but something so radical that it might finally solve one of quantum computing's biggest problems, stability. This new chip called Majorana 1 doesn't just store quantum information like traditional quantum computers. Instead, it weaves it into the very fabric of the system itself, making it far more resilient to errors. Sounds like science fiction, right? But here's the thing. This isn't some theoretical experiment tucked away in a research paper. Microsoft has spent 17 years working on this, and now they claim to have actual working qubits using a brand new approach that could make scalable quantum computing a reality. So what makes Majorana 1 different, and does it actually live up to the hype? Let's break it down. The problem with quantum computers. To understand why this is such a big deal, we need to talk about the fundamental flaw in most quantum computers today. The promise of quantum computing is insane, processing power that could outclass even the world's fastest supercomputers. It could revolutionize material science, drug discovery, AI, and even solve optimization problems that today's computers can barely touch. But there's one huge problem. Quantum computers are ridiculously fragile. The entire system runs on qubits, which can exist in a state of zero, one, or something in between. But the moment you try to observe a qubit, whether with light, electricity, or any kind of interaction, it collapses into a fixed state, essentially breaking the computation. And it gets worse. Even tiny disturbances, a stray photon, a slight temperature flow, fluctuation, or even atomic level vibrations can force qubits to collapse before calculations are finished. This phenomenon called decoherence is why today's quantum computers need massive error correction systems just to function. That's why quantum computers look like steampunk chandeliers. They require extreme vacuum chambers and temperatures near absolute zero, minus 273 degrees Celsius to minimize interference. Even then, they're still fragile. That's why Microsoft's Majorana 1 chip is such a game changer, because instead of trying to fight against this this noise, they found a way to ignore it. Microsoft's big idea, let's stop fighting errors. Instead of constantly correcting errors, what if we could design a quantum system where noise simply doesn't matter as much? That's exactly what Microsoft is doing with something called topological quantum computing. The idea is actually pretty cool. Imagine tying a knot in a rope. No matter how much you shake, stretch, or bend the rope, the knot itself stays intact. The only way to undo it is to cut it. That's how Microsoft's Majorana-based qubits work. Rather than storing quantum information in a single, fragile point, they spread it out across the system using topology, a mathematical property that makes the quantum state naturally stable. This means the information is no longer tied to an individual particle, but instead exists across the entire system. Small disturbances can't knock it out the way they do in traditional quantum computers. And to actually build this, Microsoft turned to one of the weirdest ideas in physics, the Majorana particle, the particle that shouldn't exist. If the name Majorana sounds unfamiliar, you're not alone. It's named after Ettore Majorana, an Italian physicist who, in 1938, proposed the existence of a bizarre new type of particle, one that was its own antiparticle. Now, in physics, every particle usually has an opposite counterpart. Electrons have positrons, protons have antiprotons, and when they meet, they annihilate each other. But Majorana predicted a particle that was its own opposite. Strangely, he never expanded much on this idea. In fact, he mysteriously disappeared in 1938 after boarding a boat to Naples, never to be seen again. Some joke that he found his own anti particle. For decades, physicists searched for Majorana particles in high-energy experiments, hoping to prove they existed. But the breakthrough didn't come from particle accelerators, it came from quantum materials. In 2012, researchers at Delft University observed Majorana-like behavior in specially designed nanowires. And that's exactly what Microsoft has built on, how Majorana 1 actually works. Microsoft's Majorana qubits work by taking a semiconductor nanowire, placing a superconductor on top, and cooling it down to 50 millikelvin, just a fraction of a degree above absolute zero. Under the right conditions, the electronic states within the wire split into two quantum states at opposite ends, creating Majorana zero modes. Here's where it gets weird. Each Majorana mode is half of an electron's information, meaning that, effectively, the same electron exists at both ends of the wire at the same time. This is what makes it so resistant to errors. Instead of all the quantum information being stored in a single point, it's spread out across the wire, making it naturally more robust. And now, after years of development, Microsoft Microsoft has successfully built a working 8-qubit proof of concept, the Majorana 1 chip. So, does it actually work? Here's where things get controversial. Microsoft has been working on this 
for years, but not everyone in the scientific community is convinced. Back in 2018, they published a paper claiming to have observed Majorana Zero modes, but in 2021, independent researchers found flaws in their data, and the paper had to be retracted, a major blow to their credibility. This time, Microsoft insists they've got it right. Their new research claims they've successfully demonstrated, controlled, and measured Majorana-based qubits, and they're confident this approach is scalable. Skepticism is normal in science, but if Microsoft is right, if they really have figured out a way to build stable, scalable qubits, this could be one of the most important breakthroughs in computing history. Because if they can scale from 8 qubits to thousands, quantum computing is no longer science fiction. Quantum computers are coming. Are we ready? So, let's assume Microsoft really has cracked the code on making quantum computers stable. That means we're looking at a new era of computing. One where quantum computers aren't just sitting in research labs, but are actually being used to solve real-world problems. But here's the thing. If quantum computers do become scalable and accessible, they won't just be another technological advancement like smartphones or AI. They could be civilization changing. This is uncharted territory. And while the possibilities are exciting, there's also a serious conversation we need to have. How will quantum computers change the world? Let's talk about the biggest impacts quantum computing could have and why they might not all be good. Breaking the internet's security. Right now, most of the world's online security, from your banking app to government secrets, is protected by encryption algorithms based on complex math problems that classical computers can't solve. But a powerful enough quantum computer could crack these codes almost instantly. The encryption that protects your passwords, credit card numbers, even military communications, completely useless. That's why governments and tech companies are racing to develop quantum-safe encryption before quantum computers reach that level of power. It's not a question of if they'll be able to break encryption, it's when. And if a bad actor gets there first? Well, let's just say cybersecurity is about to become a much bigger deal. Drug discovery and personalized medicine. Now for something a little more hopeful. Right now, designing new medicines is basically trial and error. We test thousands of chemical compounds, tweak them, and hope one works. But quantum computers could simulate molecular interactions at an atomic level, meaning we could design new drugs perfectly tailored to fight diseases before even testing them in a lab. This could fast-track treatments for things like cancer, Alzheimer's, and even rare genetic diseases, potentially saving millions of lives. And because quantum computers are so good at simulating chemistry, they might even help us discover cures for diseases we currently don't understand. Climate change and material science. What if we could engineer materials that were more efficient than any anything we've ever created. Quantum computers could help design better solar panels, create new materials for carbon capture, and even find ways to convert CO2 into usable energy. Right now, these kinds of breakthroughs are bottlenecked by classical computers that simply aren't powerful enough to simulate the complex chemistry involved. With quantum computing, we might finally get the tools we need to reverse climate change, or at least slow it down dramatically. The AI Revolution 2.0 AI is already transforming every industry, but we're still limited by computational power. Quantum computing could take AI to an entirely new level, processing data in ways we can't even imagine today. Training AI models in seconds instead of months, simulating human-like decision-making, developing artificial intelligence that's actually creative. If you think the AI boom has been wild so far, quantum computing might take it into sci-fi territory. Are we even ready for this? Technology always moves faster than society can handle. Just look at the rise of AI. We're still figuring out how to regulate it, and already it's affecting jobs, privacy, and and even elections. Quantum computing will be even bigger because it won't just improve what we already have. It will change the rules entirely and it could lead to scientific revolutions, but it could also create power imbalances, new cyber threats, and moral dilemmas we haven't even thought about yet. So as we stand on the edge of this breakthrough, we need to ask ourselves, who will control this technology? Who will have access to it? And how do we make sure it benefits everyone, not just the most powerful? Because if Majorana 1 really is the first step toward practical, scalable quantum computers, we're no longer talking about something happening in the distant future. We're talking about something that could be here in a few years, and once the quantum revolution begins, there's no going back. Your turn, what do you think? Now I want to hear from you. What do you think is the biggest impact quantum computing will have? Are you excited, worried, both? Drop your thoughts in the comments, because this is a conversation we all need to be part of. And if you enjoyed this breakdown, hit that like button and subscribe for more deep dives into the future of technology, because trust me, things are only going to get crazier from here. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.